Hello humans, my name is Kenyo Air Overload. Oh, so you don't like gifts, huh? And you also skip my intros. Well, guess what? Not only this video will be gifts galore, but also the skip intro button will be disabled. Yeah, that'll teach you. Oh, and also in this video, I will show you how to create gifts using Stable Diffusion and a brand new extension. So let's go. Also, how do you pronounce GIF? Is it GIF? GIF? JIF? JIF? Okay, wait. GIF. GIF. It's both? Well, okay. Alright, anyway, so in this video I will show you how to easily create any GIF or more like transform any GIF into another one using Stable Diffusion and the GIF to GIF extension by an amazing user called Lunika Miwinski. <laughs> nice. Very nice. But obviously if we want to use this extension, we need to install it first. So you're gonna come here in extensions, click on install from URL, because as of right now it is not in the available tab. You're gonna copy and paste the URL that you will find in the description down below, and then you're gonna click on install. Then you're gonna click on installed, check for updates, to see if some of your extension needs some updates anyway, and then click on apply and restart UI. And that's it, we are now good to go. If we go into the image to image tab and we scroll down in the script, you will now see a brand new GIF to GIF script. And this is what we're going to be using to create our GIF. Now what this neat little script allows you to do is that you can easily drop any GIF you want inside, choose the parameter you want, input a prompt, and if you click generate, it will actually separate every frames of the GIF into a still image, then process each and every image individually and then put them back together. And now, if we go to the outputs folder, into image to image, you will see now a brand new folder called gif to gif. And inside that folder, you will find the gif that we just created. And everything was done automatically in only a few seconds. And that's really super super cool. So yeah, this extension is like a super easy way to transform any gif into a new one using stable diffusion. You don't need to manually export every frame of a gif, process them as a batch, and then put them back together manually. Everything is done for you. Okay, so that was the easy and fast explanation, but how do you actually get the best results possible? Because as you can see right here, the result is not bad, but there is still some flickering here and there. And although unfortunately there is no right way to make it that much better, here's a few tricks that you can use. Okay, so first when you choose your GIF, do not choose anything that has a text on it. Because as you know yourself, Stable Diffusion is not good at processing text. So for example, if you find a GIF that you like, try to find the same one without a watermark or a text. Here's one for example. No watermark, no text, looks pretty good. Also, let's say for example that I want my GIF to be squared. How can I easily resize a GIF? Well, for this you're gonna use an awesome website called easygif.com. And I use this website all the time. And you can use this website to create a GIF, to convert a GIF to video, to convert a video to GIF. You can resize it, you can rotate it, crop, cut, optimize it, etc, etc. This website is absolutely fantastic and it is also free. So really super cool. So let's say we want to crop our GIF. You're gonna click here on crop, then choose your GIF, then click upload. Then you're gonna scroll down and select the aspect ratio of a square. And then you're gonna try to manually center it onto your subject. For me that looks good. Then scroll down and click on crop image. And there we go, now we have a square GIF. You can just right click and then save the image. Now obviously you don't need to choose a square GIF, you can choose any GIF of any size and any ratio you want. I'm just showing you what is currently possible. So the first thing that you want to do, before trying out the full GIF to GIF script, so just select none for now, you're gonna be using the normal image to image tab to find the right seed. Because we want to find the right seed for the entire GIF. This way we're gonna have a consistent quality throughout the whole GIF. So first you're gonna write your prompt. For this you can of course choose any model that you want. In my case I will be using the Protogen V2.2. Then you're gonna scroll down. If you haven't chosen a square format for your GIF, you're gonna have to change the width and the height so that it matches with the size of your image. And now the most important thing is that we need to play a lot with the denoising strength. Because of course as you know the higher the denoising strength, the less the final image will look like our base image. So the lower the denoising strength, the less flickering they will be, but at the same time you also lose a lot of stylization and the higher the denoising strength, the higher the stylization will be, but now you increase the flickering. Which is why I highly suggest to start with a denoising strength of around 0.3. 
and then go from there. And in my case, I will just click on generate. And here's the final result. Looks pretty good. I will put that image aside just in case. But now I'm also gonna do a few more generation to see if we can get better images. Here's another one that also looks good. And what we can do now, for example, is that if we increase the denoising strength at something very high, you will see now that, as I said, the stylization is way more important, but it doesn't look like our base image anymore. So this is definitely not what we want. We definitely want a low denoising strength while keeping as much stylization as possible. So now let me try with 0 0.4, which gives me something like this. And that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna try with those settings first and see the end result. So for this, you're gonna scroll down, click here to reuse the same seed, then we're gonna select our GIF to GIF script. Here we can choose the desired FPS that we want for our GIF. If you increase it, you will see that it will become way faster. And if you decrease it, it will become slower. Here you have an option to add interpolation frames, which will basically generate extra frames to make the GIF smoother, but I can tell you that it's not a good idea to try it out, because you're gonna have a pretty weird result. So just leave the interpolation frames by default. And you can just leave everything else by default. And then finally click generate. And this is the final result. And as you can see, there is a lot of problem with this generation. There is a lot of flickering, there is a lot of weird artifacts, things that doesn't work as well, meaning that our denoising strength was way too high to begin with. So now we know that 0.4 is way too much. So this time let's try with 0.3 and then try again. And this is our final result. So definitely a little bit better, but still a lot of flickering and a lot of problems. Meaning unfortunately again, the denoising strength was way too high. So let's decrease it even further to 0.2. And this is the gift of the 0.2 denoising strength. Definitely way better, and although it's not perfect, it still looks pretty cool. Especially when it's so easy to make. Now obviously, depending on the model that you use, you're gonna have better or worse results. And speaking of models, if you watched my previous video, you would know that now we can use the Instruct Pix to Pix model inside the Image to Image tab. And that is the model that we're gonna be using now. So if I come here and I select the Instruct Pix to Pix model, and I write a prompt, like turn him into an old man, and I click Generate, it gives me something like this. And I can easily use the Instruct Pix to Pix model in combination with the Gift to Gift script. So so again, just come here, use the same seed, in the script set a GIF to GIF, upload your GIF, and then click generate. And this is the final result. As you can see, it is pretty interesting. There is definitely a little bit of flickering, but as I said, it heavily depends on the model that you choose. And for how easy we created this GIF, with just a small extension and a small prompt, there is definitely a lot of potential. Here is an example of a video of a hand transformed into a marble hand using the Instruct Pix to Pix model. And the result is actually really, really cool. So yes, there is definitely a lot of potential with this model and with this extension. Now, as you saw previously with the first gift that we created, you saw that there is a lot of artifacts around the hands, behind the character and stuff like that. And all of that is really super annoying. And I know what you're gonna say. Oh man, if only we could just paint this part of the face and nothing else. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can. And for this, well, we're simply going to be using the in painting tab. Simple as that. Because it is a script, you don't have to convert the entire GIF into a new one. If there is only an area of the GIF that you want to transform, you can easily do that with the in painting tab. So for example, if I only want to in paint his face, I can just come here, in paint this entire area, in the in paint area select only masked, then choose my GIF to GIF script, upload my GIF, and then simply click on generate. And this is our final result. As you can see, only this area that we in painted is now transformed with stable diffusion. Everything else is just the same. But the problem is that as you can see right here, since we only painted this part of the image, everything else will not be changed. So as you can see, when he is in the beginning, his face changes, but when he goes into the right, nothing changes anymore because we did not impaint this part of the image. And to solve this issue, we could, for example, split the GIF into two parts. The first part is where you're gonna impaint this area of the image, and the second part is where you're gonna impaint this area of the image. And then we can merge these two parts together to create one single GIF. And to do this, we're gonna again use this website right here, easygif.com. So for this, you're gonna click here on split, select your GIF, click on upload, and then you're gonna click on frames. And as you can see right now, these are all the frames of our GIF. In this particular GIF, you can see that there is 97 frames. And now we need to find the frame where our characters start to move on the right. And I think that it is right here around frame 79. So we want to split our GIF frame 1 to 
79 and then frame 80 to 97. So I'm gonna come here, toggle a range of frames, I'm gonna input 79 to 97 and then click skip. And as you can see right now, all these frames right here were masked. Then you can click on make a GIF and there you go. As you can see, this is part one of our GIF. So just right click and save the image. And now we're gonna go back and here select from one to 78 and then click skip. And now 78 to 97, click enable. As you can see now, the frames 1 to 78 are disabled, while the frames 79 to 97 are now enabled, which is part 2 of our GIF. And then click make a GIF. And as you can see, this is part 2 of our GIF. And we will need to input this area right here. So again, just right click and save image. So now we're gonna go back to stable diffusion, select part 1 of our GIF, and now in the inputting area, we're gonna input over his face, which is the area that we want to change. And then click generate. And there you go, this is part one of our GIF, as you can see right here. And now we're gonna do part two. So again, same thing, you're just gonna delete this GIF right here, select part two, do the same right here. And here we're gonna input this entire area right here, because we know that it's gonna move from left to right. And there you go, and now I can finally click on generate. And this is part two of our GIF. And now we need to merge them together to create one single big GIF. And again, we're going to be using our trusty easygif.com website. So here you're going to click on GIF Maker. You're going to select our two GIFs and then click on Upload and Make a GIF. Here you're going to see all the frames of our two GIFs put together. And you can even interchange frames if you want to. And then when you're happy with the order of the frames, you can click on Make a GIF. And this is the final result. Our two GIFs put into one which is way more precise than the one we did previously. Now, of course, you can even divide the GIF into multiple parts. I just did two parts for the example, then you can do way, way more to have way more control and have something way more precise. And all of that thanks to a very neat little extension. And again, that's really super cool. And there we have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.